After the end of the war, several significant conferences were held. At the San Francisco Conference in 1945, the Charter of the United Nations was created. At the 1945 Potsdam Conference, the post-war order was established and a peaceful settlement was prepared. Let's visit the famous 1946 Havana Conference. What is the conference famous for? Maybe medical experts presented their works and discussed the treatment of cardiovascular diseases. Or maybe heads of state debated the global warming question there for the first time. Come closer and see. Queerly did the medical experts come with bodyguards. Or the heads of states are armed. It's much simpler. The most pressing items on the conference agenda were the leadership and authority within the New York Mafia, the mob-controlled Havana Casino interests, and the narcotics operations. A queer agenda, isn't it? And what did you want? The Havana Conference was a meeting of United States Mafia leaders. It was arranged by Charles Lucky Luciano and Mayor the Little Man Lansky. How did they relate to the Cuban Revolution, you ask? The most direct relationship. In 1933, Colonel Fulgencio Batista took over as Chief of the General Staff of the Cuban Army. We want to open a casino in Havana. No problem, 10% of the profit will be mine. Fulgencio, you're a good man. Batista began to systematically profit from the exploitation of Cuba's commercial interests by negotiating lucrative relationships with the American Mafia who controlled the drug, gambling and prostitution businesses in Havana. You dare not do it in Cuba. No man, no problem. Batista's political enemies, as a rule, faced a sad fate. Many opponents of the dictator disappeared without a trace. Batista became president-elect of Cuba. But after four years of presidency, he lost the 1944 elections and left for the United States. Everything is so expensive here, so I will have to work soon. But I don't want to work. Bro, become a politician again. Batista became a senator. He tried to run for president again in 1952. Batista wasn't popular with the people. Sir, the poll said you have no chance of becoming president. To hell with all the polls. I think that all elections must be democratic. Everyone agrees. Those who are for me, raise your hands. And who are for other candidates? Let's vote again. Who are for me? No votes against me. I am appointing myself as provisional president for two years. What about the popular vote? Three months before the elections, Batista, with army backing, staged a coup and seized power. We have a good constitution, I admit it, so I will suspend it. This is temporary, don't worry. The temporary suspension of the Cuban constitution continued until Batista created a new constitutional law. Do not worry, I have preserved the democratic and progressive essence of the old constitution. We have simply banned freedom of speech, assembly, strikes, and also introduced a death penalty, which was prohibited by the old constitution. But don't worry. Two years after the military coup, it was necessary to legalise the regime. Well, there will be an election. The main opposition candidate was Ramon Grau San Martin in the election. And what do you think he did to win? Maybe he ran a good election campaign. Maybe he spoke to his supporters. What? I just withdrew my candidacy. Yes, yes, you heard right. Batista's only opponent in the election withdrew his candidacy before election day. I think it's not hard to guess who became president. Fidel Castro, when he was just 14 years old, wrote a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt. He congratulated the president on his third term's re-election and asked, If you like, give me an American $10 bill. I have never seen it, but I would really like to have one. Your friend, Fidel Castro. He did, in fact, receive correspondence from the White House thanking him for his letter, but he never received the $10 bill. Castro graduated as a Doctor of Law in 1950. After the military coup, intent on opposing Batista, Castro brought several legal cases against the government. He accused Batista of violating the democratic constitution. But those came to nothing, and Castro began thinking of alternate ways to oust the regime. Castro gathered 165 revolutionaries for the mission. On the 26th of July 1953, the rebels attacked the Moncada barracks in Santiago and the barracks in Bayamo, only to be decisively defeated by the government soldiers. Fidel Castro, you are sentenced to 15 years in prison. So, you can write over there. 
Here are the books of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and other revolutionaries. It's not so bad. What's the punishment? Your mother-in-law is a jail warden. No! Our movement has no name. Maybe for the freedom of Cuba. The police can guess that it's the revolutionary movement. When did we attack the barracks? 26th of July. This will be the name, the 26th of July movement, so that no one guesses. <laughs> Castro doesn't seem to pose a serious threat. What can he do? They couldn't even capture the barracks. I'll have mercy on him. Fidel Castro, his brother, and some other members of the July 26th movement were pardoned. Castro and several comrades travelled to Mexico in 1955. You have to take the Caxis tincture. After receiving his diploma as a surgeon, the future revolutionary Ernesto Che Guevara travelled in Latin America. On the way, he worked as a doctor, sold books, wrote articles, and took on any work he could find. Ernesto, we're having a little revolutionary party later. Come, you won't regret it. Hello, Ernesto. What will you drink? I like mate. You and I have a lot in common, buddy. Come on, Ernesto. I'll introduce you to another mate lover. Ernesto, let's see the plan for the invasion of Cuba while we drink mate. I realise that we can't take action without a plan. Great detailed plan, I think. So Che Guevara joined the Cuban revolutionaries. The revolutionaries were arrested and released in some time. This did not change their plans. Okay, 12,000 bucks and it's yours. Deal. Look, the yacht Granma was only designed to accommodate 12 people with a maximum of 25. Yeah, just right for us. Newspapers wrote about Fidel's preparations for sailing to Cuba. The yacht Granma departed from Mexico, carrying the Castro brothers and 80 others, including Ernesto Che Guevara. Look, a Mexican newspaper wrote that the revolutionaries are sailing to Cuba. It looks like this. No, no, no. It looks like this. Let's do something. Let's ambush them anyway. Send a thousand soldiers and several planes to destroy them. A party of 82 people landed in Cuba. Only 22 revolutionaries got to the designated place. They had two machine guns. This is how the revolution began. Castro and Che Guevara then began a guerrilla campaign against the Batista regime, with their main forces supported by numerous poorly armed peasants and the well-armed fighters of urban organisation. With volunteers boosting the rebel forces to over 200, Castro divided his army into three columns, commanded by himself, his brother and Guevara. The rebels went on the offensive, pushing the army out of the mountains, with Castro using his columns in a pincer movement to surround the main army concentration in Santiago. The city of Santa Clara fell to the combined forces of the rebels. Sir, we won't be able to repel the attack on Havana. What to do? I'm off right now. News of these defeats caused Batista to panic. He fled Cuba by air for the Dominican Republic just hours later. I want to take something as a keepsake. Havana fridge magnet? Leaving Cuba, Batista took most of the money from Cuba's central bank reserves. He fled into exile with over $300 million on the 31st of December 1958. Happy New Year. Castro reached Havana on the 9th of January 1959. We'll make our country prosperous and democratic, right, Fidel? Hmm, yes, yes, for sure. But firstly, we will shoot the revolution's opponents. <laughs> Done. Democracy, constitution now. Right, Fidel? Wait, now we have to shoot everyone who's against us. They're traitors. What about the court? Justice? Oh, I completely forgot about the court. You're accused of being against communism. I have never been against it. Now the lawyer's speech. Forgive me for defending such a bad person. Please find him guilty. Sentenced to death. Now we have courts. What did Che Guevara do after the revolution? He was appointed Minister of Industry firstly. Are there economists? I didn't hear. He said are there communists? I am. Okay, Che Guevara will be appointed Finance Minister. Guevara acquired the additional position of Finance Minister as well as President of the National Bank. I'm tired of working in offices, banks, ministries, that's, that's not a lie. <sighs> che Guevara left Cuba in 1965. His purpose was to spread the influence of Marxist socialism on the world. 
He went to Africa to offer his knowledge and experience as a guerrilla to the ongoing conflict in the Congo. Then he departed for Bolivia. <laughs> he was executed by government troops there. Did things get better in Cuba? But that's a completely different story.